Right, so I'm not gonna, I'm gonna try not to overthink this one. Um, I'm just gonna film it and try and do very minimal editing. Um, it might be long, I apologize if it's super long, but uh, this is like, like a response to the last video. So the last video that I made, if I haven't, if you haven't watched it, watch this first, because it's gonna be referencing, referencing that one. Um, but the response on it was absolutely mental. Uh, I honestly did not think I'd get the response that I did. And when I hit publish on it, and I saw like, and started to read all the comments after the first few hours that I haven't replied to everyone. Um, I haven't really been on uh, social media a lot, on my phone a lot, which I find it like, I don't know, I find it quite uncomfortable that so many people are fussing about me or like, I don't know, man, it's, it's a weird one. But yeah, the comments were absolutely mental, long story short. And the reoccurring theme with, with all of them was do a GoFundMe, do some funding, do something to help you get the surgery that you need. And this video is going to basically be talking about that. So Tom has done a, my friend Tom reluctantly made me, I say reluctantly, I reluctantly let him make me a GoFundMe, which he has done, and it will be linked in this video. But I want to, I want to speak about it and run some things or let, like, let you guys know some things first. First of all, I want to say that there is absolutely no obligation to, uh, to give anything to it. Like I expect, I do not expect anyone to give me anything to it at all, period. Like literally, I do not want people to feel like they should give me anything at all. Obviously, it'd be sick if everyone gave me one pound because then that'd be, if I have 160K subscribers, that'd be 160K pounds. It should be absolutely fantastic. But I just want to start by saying that I do not feel any, I don't, I don't want anyone to feel any obligation to do anything for it at all. It makes you feel very uncomfortable doing this. Like, I don't like begging for things. I don't like um, feeling like I can't do things by myself. I don't like relying on other people for things. I made that video and I basically want to run by a few things regarding the surgery, regarding my health, regarding the situation that I'm in and just let you guys know a few things before you, just to clear thing, clear a few things up and even like before anyone even considers donating, like I don't want big amounts of money. I don't want people to feel obliged to give anything. I don't want you to give anything that you can't afford. Like I don't want people to fucking give me, do you know what I mean? Go out of their way to help me. So I want to start by saying that there are a million people, this is this is probably why I find it so uncomfortable, there are a million people much worse off than me. People that are properly broke, people that have no money whatsoever, that need life-changing surgeries, life-saving surgery, people that are dying, that can't afford treatment. And I feel like, I think I didn't want to do the GoFundMe because I feel bad that I'm getting help and other people aren't that need it more than me. I'm in a situation where for the first surgery, each surgery will be about 10K, um, excluding flights, excluding any any complications, any additional medical expenses. It is private, it is abroad, so everything will have to be covered from blood transfusions, from medication that I need, from antibiotics if I got an infection, I have to stay in hospital for any longer, hospital stays, hospital bed, etc., etc. All that is gonna add up. So the cost of the surgery is around 10K. Um, and then if I need any more surgeries, this is where the problem lies because I'm literally fucked and it's a very real possibility that the that I might need one or two and setting my expectations realistically like the first one's not guaranteed to do well like I said in the first video so at least between a rock and a hard place where like if anything does go wrong that's not perfect I'll be able to scrape together the money for the first one like this is why I want to let you guys know before like you even consider giving anything to me if you were doing that which I don't expect you to do but if I did get the money for the first one which I can do like I said like I said I would find a way and I'd make it happen I'd do it when I do that, if anything additional came up or I did need the second or the third, then I would be in a very, a very, I'll be fucked basically. Um, there's no way of sugarcoating it. I'll be, I'll be fucked. But it's not like I'm in a situation where I'm like living on the streets, like I'm broke. Like I said, I could sell my car, I could sell various other things, I could scrape the money together, I could do something. But I want you guys to know that before donating to me because I don't want to be like some fraud or outed as a fraud. Do you, do you know what I mean? Or anything like that. And then in the video as well, like, I, I don't know. It's very weird because I've lived with this my whole life. Like, I'm pretty chill about it. The fact that I've got all this shit going on, um, that, like loads of people are messaging me like, oh, I hope you're all right. Like, I'm literally, I'm chill. Like, I'm good. Um, and like, I find uh, another thing, I find myself in a difficult situation where I don't know if I'm just overly blase about it. Like I'm just, I'm just used to this shit. Like it, it is what it is. I'm pretty chill. I'm sure it's going to be very different. Like when I'm lying on an operating table about to get anaesthetized, like put to sleep. But now it's, I'm pretty chill. Like I'm not really worried. It is what it is. Like I've taken it as it comes. Um. So like part, of, like I don't know whether I'm being too blase about it or I've like exaggerated it in the video and everyone thinks I'm going to die next week or something. So I want to make it very clear as well that. 
I'm not gonna die within like a week or two. It's like I said, there's people much worse off than me. I haven't got like terminal cancer or anything like that. The, the situation is, is I've got lymphedema. I've got this issue with my lymphatic system that extends all the way up into my kidneys. The lymph nodes are incredibly bloated and I don't know what you'd call it, like 10 times the size. Um, I've had a few specialists as well message me since seeing that video who actually followed me in lymphedema and being like, bro, you're fucked. Don't mean to scare you, which is kind of good because then it feels like I, I was worried about like making it sound like it's too bad. And I was like, okay, cool. These guys also said fucked sound. Um, and then I've also got hyplasia as well, um, which a little Google will reveal. It's like a pre-cancerous type of cell within your lymphatic system, which is obviously not good because it's kind of connected to your whole body. Um, but I do not have cancer. Um, I do not have like two weeks left to live. It's something that in the future might reduce my life or probably would reduce the expectancy of my life and get worse over time, or it definitely would get worse over time if I leave it. So that's the reason for the surgery. And that's kind of as as um, straight to the point as I can explain with the with the situation. And then the other thing I want to say as well, before actually speaking to the video, the other thing as well, don't you dare give me any money, is that this is why I didn't want to do a GoFundMe because it's, I don't want to look like you guys to like think, be like, this guy's just fucking mugged us off. I have a trip to, to Spain booked um, <laughs> with the GoFundMe money. Nah, um, I've got like one of these 70 pound uh, trips to Spain booked that I booked before making that video and before doing this and before even realizing that a GoFundMe is gonna be made for me. It's like 70 pound flights to Spain because I'm gonna miss out on summer. Me and my girlfriend have done that and that is on the 1st of May. I'll make a YouTube video on it, but I just wanna let you guys know that obviously the cost of living crisis, people are really, really fucking struggling. And like the fact that people are willing to donate to me absolutely blows my mind. But I don't want people to feel obliged to do it, which they shouldn't be, and then watch like or see me and be like, what the hell, this guy's in Spain when I'm struggling and I've just given him like some of my hard earned money, which I don't want you to do. But yeah, um, I've got like, I've built like a 70 pound flight to Spain um, from the, like for a few days at the start of May um, as a bit of a trip away because my birthday's around then as well. I'm not really gonna have a summer. I'm gonna miss out on a lot of summer um, with my girlfriend. My girlfriend sorted that. Um, I wanted to let you guys know that as well and be completely transparent and completely open because I feel like I owe you an explanation of everything um, if people are gonna be, yeah, if I'm the fucking charity case. I'll give you a little bit of an insight anyway into uh, into like what it kind of, or the story with the condition um, as we're here, as I'm sitting in a freaking lay-by in the car. Um, I've had it for about, so I've had lymphedema, uh, the condition of my legs is about 10 years old. And basically what happened was one day I, I can't remember, my mum would be able to tell you better, but one day I had this like pain in my hip or my knee. Um, and that was really bad. Like, I remember not being able to walk for a few weeks. So I had to be able to be carried around everywhere because a pretty normal active kid um, and then I had this like that kind of subsided after after I think it's I don't know if it's a few weeks or a few months obviously you remember things being a lot longer when you're younger it felt like a few months but that subsided eventually I was in agony like I couldn't walk anywhere I had to be carried around like numerous hospital visits seeing specialists and then I had this like swelling in my leg just in the lower half of my leg that wouldn't um, wouldn't go away and uh, and after months and months and months and hundreds of tests, they eventually, I'm exaggerating, it's probably like 10 tests, um, they, uh, they eventually diagnosed me with lymphedema, um, which is basically damage to your lymphatic system through unknown causes normally. Like cancer patients get it after they get their lymph nodes removed. It's very common in uh, breast cancer. And it basically means that my, my leg will swell. So um, I struggle with, there's a lot of stuff that I struggle with. I don't really talk about it much because I just live with it. It's just my reality, you know. I feel like everyone has has something physical or mental, like a struggle in their life that they go through. So I'm not like some special snowflake. It is what it is. Um, but you just get on with it and deal with it. So I can't stand up, like like queuing, for example. It's pretty convenient, but I still queue because like I'm like, oh, look, I'm this 90 kilo ripped, like amazing in shape guy. Sorry, I can't queue. Can you let me go to the front? Um, so I still queue anyway. Um, but queuing, like standing stationary, absolutely ruins my leg. Um, it causes it to swell. And the thing is, is that the more, so my leg's permanently swollen. I have to wear this compression tight on it 24 seven. And uh, the longer it's sw swollen for, or the more time it's swollen for, it's, it's never normal. Like I put some pictures of it. This is kind of what it's like day to day. Like this match your leg. I've got no toenail that are surgically removed because of the condition. I'll explain about that again in a bit. 
Um, but but the longer it's swollen, this this, this fluid just basically hardens like a cement. It, it, it's not exactly the fluid, but um, you get something called fibrosis occurring. You get like a, a build up of fat and a build up of tissue on the leg until you get like these gigantic, like disgusting legs that I put in my last video that I don't even want to look at um, when it gets really bad or if it gets really bad. And um, obviously that's not very sightly. It, it takes away a lot of your quality of life. It reduces your mobility. You're not able to walk around with a tree trunk leg. Um, and yeah, it's just, it, it, it affects it affects me a lot, but I, I deal with it pretty well. So like the whole social media thing, man, like, I never wanted to be an influencer or or do what I do now. Like, I had a completely different life path set out. I wanted to join the military when I was younger. Like, I used to be obsessed with the military, like playing soldiers. I wanted to join the Marines in the UK, which is like a bit more, I think it's a bit more specialist than the US. Um, it's, it's, yeah, the basic training's a bit different. Uh, but I wouldn't pass medical for that. Uh, then I wanted to do um, underwater cinematography. So I did marine biology at university. And then I used to work on films in my spare time as well. So I'd literally be at uni full time. And then in every like waking weekend um, time off, I'd either do diving work to build up my diving experience, like scallop diving or working in an aquarium. And then I'd do uh, film work as well. Um, like on films to get film experience and the goal was that was, was ultimately to um, go into underwater filmmaking because that's what I wanted to do uh, because I was like okay what's good for my leg I can't really spend like there's no, if I have a normal job I will be handicapped by the time I'm like 20 25 so I was like there's there's nothing that I can do I don't know I'm telling you this one to tell you anyway I was like there's nothing there's that I've got to, I've got to build a future for myself that's gonna allow me to live longly like without this condition of my leg getting worse um, because like the, the more swollen the leg gets, the more permanently swollen it becomes. The skin changes, it opens it up to infections. Infections can kill you, you can lose your leg, um, etc., etc. And then anyway, long story short, um, I tried and tried and tried to get into film. And I remember I got on this series, my friend got involved um, by a director called Kurt Sutter, the guy that did The Sons of Anarchy. So it was quite a big thing for Netflix. And I finally got on this series doing video playback, um, video playback trainee assistant. Um, and I was so excited. Like I wanted to do this my like my adult life. It's kind of what I decided to do, like film work. I was like, yes, pays well. Like I, I can sit down like when I need to, it's relatively flexible. And then obviously I was on my feet all day because I was like a little bitch. And after that, like I got home from work uh, on the first day, took off my trousers and I like, my leg did not feel good. It gets like really heavy feeling because it literally swells to like twice the size. And then I looked at my leg and it was like, had balloon twice the size. I could barely bend it. I, I had like no mobility. And I looked at my leg and just fucking cried, man. Like I like broke down to tears. And it just felt like my entire life was over. Like I was like, there's nothing that I can do. I'm literally destined to be a freaking uh, wheelchair user or a cripple by the time I'm like twenty in my in my mid twenties. And yeah, long story short. Um, I was doing, I was making YouTube videos at the time anyway, just kind of like a bit more of, as a bit more of a hobby. Um, and then that started to take off and I was like, okay, double down on that. I'll take that full time. I'll be able to work for myself, et cetera, et cetera. So that'll be, that'll be something that I'll try and do. So yeah, since then, since then I've basically, I've basically done YouTube because of the issues with my leg. Like I can't stand up for long periods of time. I can't stand up stationary. Um, it's just little things, man. Like, like it's not the end of the world. I don't want to make it into a moaning fest because it's like my reality and it, I just fucking get on with it. Um, but things like as well, um, I, I try to think about it growing up. I've had about seven knee surgeries related to the lymphedema. Um, whether I needed any of those or not, um, it is still up for debate like whether I actually had an infection like we don't know whether I was given an infection in the hospital we don't know um, because the condition is incredibly rare in someone in my age and the way that I got it they don't know how I've got it um, so like I was first admitted to hospital when I was about 18 years old and like I feel like all this stuff I just should tell you my life story uh, with the leg condition I feel like all this stuff um, anything that happens to you like you can whether it has meaning or not is up for debate but I feel like you can add meaning to things so like you can you can take meaning away from things that are gonna benefit you and ultimately get something good out of the situation so like when I was about 17 18 I think I just turned 18 I had this issue with my knee. My knee was incredibly swollen. Um, I was literally crippled again. Um, I lost loads of weight. I got down to uh, about 60 kilograms. I'm about 90 kilograms now. So that's a third of my current body weight. Um, I was lighter than I am now. So it's 33% less. 
And um, I, I got admitted to hospital and then I had knee surgeries and then I was like, yeah, I basically felt like I was dying on death's door. But long story short, I was told I'd get arthritis and cartilage problems, etc., etc., and like have problems with mobility and knee after the surgeries. And then after that, that is when I really got into training and that's when I made that first transformation video, like the 12 million views one. But I forgot to um, use non-copyrighted music on and lost out on like twenty thousand pounds on. But that's a story for another day. Um, and then I made that one. That really like slingshotted me into into YouTube and into fitness and other things. And it, if it wasn't for that, like I wouldn't be I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing right now. So it it is what it is, man. Like all these things are shit. Um, it, it can be shit, but it's also like part of the journey. It without these like hiccups or without these times of adversity you would not be doing what you're doing or it wouldn't bring about the opportunities that you that you it wouldn't bring about certain opportunities it shapes you as a person like um adversity builds builds character and i'm very aware of that but anyway um i had that problem came out of hospital i think i had three knee surgeries then um because they thought i had an infection in my knee because uh, i had a fever i was very sick um they didn't want it to turn to septicemia blood poisoning potentially kill me um, and then, yeah, life goes on kind of thing. And then I had a few more of those. So I had another, like every, it seemed to happen every couple of years. Like one day I'd wake up and I'd have, I'd be, feel like really sick. I'd have this swollen knee. I'd have like, I'd be in agonizing pain, unable to walk. And then I'd have this, I'd get, I'd get sent to hospital and it'd either be fine or I'd either need surgery and be in there for God knows how long. Um, but yeah, since, since then the, the leg has progressively got worse. When I, when I was younger, when I first got diagnosed with it, I used to just wear this little, little, uh, compression garment garment that was really lightweight it was kind of like a tight like as thick as a tight that used to cover just the lower half of my knee and then over time as i've got older as the fibrosis has slowly built up in my leg um as the like the baseline of swelling so in the morning when i first had it my leg you wouldn't be able to tell the difference really between my legs like in terms of swelling in the evening throughout the day it'd swell up um and i have to sleep my legs up every night like elevated i have to wear the compression sock every day to like kind of survive or i would be crippled um, but, but yeah, as I've got older, as time has gone on, it's got progressively worse. So like now, um, the swelling doesn't just affect my ankle. It affects my ankle, my foot, my toes. I have to wear compression on my toes. Um, it affects my calf, my knee, my thigh, um, all the way up, like my entire left leg, basically. And so I have to wear like quite a thick, um, a, a thigh length compression garment because of that gradual decrease or, or things getting worse. But yeah, um, a few a few other things. I'm just trying to explain the situation, kind of like my day to day life. Obviously, I have to wear that every single day. Not the end of the world. I also have to eat a low fat diet um, because the the fat can clog up the lymphatic system or blocks it up. So I have to eat a very low fat diet, which again isn't the end of the world. Completely fine. Um, and then yeah, man, I've just I've just kind of struggled with like jobs and like people look at me and think I'm like a young like a, a fit lad. Um, if I'm struggling to queue or if I'm like at an event, you know, I have to lean on the barrier. It's why I'm kind of like at the front a lot. Um, oh no your life's so hard you have to lean on the barriers at event and all this shit and um and yeah man but but going back to it up to like uh, i had a few issues in uni with it um obviously it's plagued me with like insecurities when i was younger like i used to have girlfriends um or when i got my first girlfriend i'd go to the bathroom to get changed uh in the morning or in the evening to take off this leg tight because i was so like ashamed and disgusted by it but i'm pretty good with it now it's pretty well i don't give a fuck about a lot of things um because i've had that but yeah, um, so I had these bouts of like surgeries on my knee. I've had about seven knee surgeries in total. Um, then in 2019, I was set to do like my first proper men's physique show. First proper, proper men's physique show. And um, you, you guys probably know that I like drum and bass if you follow the channel. Um, I make and I, I, well, I do my best to produce it. I, I DJ it as well. And uh, I, I'm kind of, I've got a lot of friends that, that do, do similar things full time. And a uh, producer I really like is Metric, actually. Um, I, I use a lot of his tracks. He makes like really cool, spacey synth wave. Uh, or used to do a lot more synth wave. He, like really cool inspired stuff with big synths. Um, I really like his sounds. But long story short, anyway, it's 2019. Um, I was on prep for a men's physique show. I was about six weeks out. I'd been absolutely busting my balls to do this because it was like, it's kind of like, for me, it was like the milestone, getting back in shape, like coming back from everything, um, saying, fuck the odds. And uh, it was my birthday weekend. It was actually my birthday, I remember this. It was my birthday weekend, I was six weeks out. I was in London, I just got back from um, learning how to skydive in, in Portugal. I was on an absolute high. I was meeting up with my favorite producer, um, Metric, to film a, um, to film like in his studio and then film down at Fabric in London to help him film some stuff. I used to do videography work as well, like freelance stuff, because it was one of the jobs that I could get started off doing. Um, also had a family trip to Malta, 
planned um, for the Monday, so it was on a weekend with my family. And then on the Friday, I basically got sick again in London, and uh, the same thing happened all over again to my knee. Got admitted to hospital, missed my so my birthday alone in hospital. Uh, my family went to Malta without me. Like I told them to go because they were like four or five hours away, and like I'm from a poor family, like family holidays aren't really a thing. Um, so the fact that we could all go away together, my mum, my little sisters, was like absolutely sick. Obviously missed that, uh, missed my birthday, missed the opportunity of Metric and Fabric, and dude, that was like, and then also six weeks out from my show that I'd spent like the last 10 weeks busting my ass for, all stripped away from me in a second. I missed out on so much. But regardless of that, um, I actually made a YouTube video on that one. I'll put it on the screen now. Regardless of that, um, we came out of hospital. I think I'd like, I can't remember. It's in the video. It's like either either four weeks or six weeks. You'll, you'll find out from the video. Like I don't mean to exaggerate or mislead. Um, but yeah, um, basically did the show with, with that much time. Um, fucking killed myself. It's probably quite stupid. Went straight back into cardio after knee surgeries. I might have had one, two knee surgeries then, I think. Or it could have been one. 2019 had four weeks left to prep um what won the show absolutely smashed it which was a really really good feeling and uh and, and yeah man i've always i i feel like it's been a, an uphill battle for me but recently like the battles have been getting more and more severe and then after that show as well um this is really disgusting i haven't really shared this because it's just like what's the need um i actually got this i had this like ingrowing toenail on my big uh big toe on my left leg so my condition makes me prone to infections so any kind of cuts to the skin, even like a little scratch um, can result in me getting cellulitis, which can turn into blood poisoning, which can turn into me being incredibly sick. I basically had this like, I got, I think my, my, my foot got stood on and I had this problem with my toe where I had this like ingrowing toenail and it would just wouldn't stop leaking tissue fluid. So I had like a, a solid year where I, I think it was 2020, 21, where my foot would just constantly be soaked. Like it just constantly like piss out this like clear tissue fluid fluid from this cut next to my toenail that I just never hear, never heal. And I would like wear shoes and I'd be soaked, like I'd soak through like all the socks, um, whatever I wore. And this was just 24 seven for me. And that was like a ticking time bomb waiting to get infected. Um, so what I did was I got that toenail removed. I had surgery on it. I had the nail bed surgically removed as well. Um, and then, yeah, man. Um, and then, then since then, like I said, it's been getting getting worse. So I've had this thing as well, um, where you can see in the in the MRI scans on the last video that I put up, I got a lot of swelling around my knee. Um, where the lymph nodes are so swollen around my knee, um, I started to get this thing called a Baker's cyst, which is like, or I did get a Baker's cyst, um, which has started to come back now, which is like this golf ball size swelling behind my knee that stopped me from bending my knee. Um, if I tried to train legs, if I bent my legs, if I, if I squatted, it would be agonizing pain. Like it'd be really, really horrible. Um, and like every time I bend my knee, it would just like crush everything behind the kneecap or behind the knee because there's so much swelling there um, and it's like this deep burning pain it's horrible and then yeah that was that kind of I can feel it now like that affects me day to day like walking it's always like having a golf ball um, in the back of your leg and it's just like these little niggles these little things just seem to be getting worse and then anyway um, I'll just fast forward a load of shit that's happened fast forward to 2022 um, obviously again I made a transformation video since then explained everything on YouTube it's like all documented I, I got probably the worst hospital bout yet um, where I had my knee fully opened up I had an arthroscopic uh, a sinovectomy um, so rather than it being a keyhole surgery like the pre the six previous surgeries this one they like opened the knee from top to bottom um moved the kneecap to the side shaved out all of the knee joint lining because they thought i had an infection and the infection was like harbored in there i was in hospital for about a month um, because of the c virus um, I couldn't have any visitors really other than my girlfriend who was working as well like at the other side of the country so she could only see me for about five days. Spent a month in hospital, uh, went through probably the worst, well definitely the worst pain I've ever been through in my entire life was prodded and poked at things. And and yeah man, and that would like put me very close to breaking point. Like in that first, in, like in my last week, like I was just like, yeah. I'm done, like, because I, I kept thinking I was going home, then I'd be another surgery and another surgery and another surgery, and like, I, I've never experienced pain like that in my life. Like, I've made a full follow-up video um, explaining the time in hospital and explaining it, which will explain it better if you're interested. But long story short, it's like things have been slowly getting worse, and I live in denial of that. I continue to live my life like it's probably why I live my life like I do, doing all these fun things and doing as much as I can. But the condition has been worsening, um, and then it was only recently. So I went to an MRI scan in Paris. Um, someone messaged me actually a lovely lady called Charlotte 
and weirdly enough, like three years ago, she had um, got lymphedema from being, it's like bitten by a cat and then getting an infection from that, which is absolutely mad. And uh, she she had messaged me on Instagram, and like I get quite a few messages on Instagram, so I don't get back to anyone. But if it's like, or I don't get back to a lot of people, um, I try to. But if it's like something important, I'll always do my best to get back. And I basically wrote out to her like everything that I, it's probably about four years ago. I wrote out to her everything that I'd found about lymphedema, like what works, um, like who are like possible surgical options. Because in the past, I tried to get surgery for it in the UK, but they denied me getting surgery um, because they said like I was too far gone. So. So yeah, um, I'd like given her some advice like four years ago or so, and then a few months ago, she ran me out of the blue, messaged me and was like, Mo, I'm getting this surgery in, um, in Paris. And there's this one surgeon, she's absolutely brilliant. And I've never heard, I, I'd never heard of this. And it was like, she's actually able to, to heal people with lymphedema in some cases, or basically completely, completely cure, cure the condition to the extent where they no longer need to wear compression, which I thought was absolutely mental. So I was like, okay, um, I contacted her straight away. Um, it's really hard to get in touch with her because she's under, like obviously very, very busy. Uh, contacted her, managed to get an appointment in Paris. And then she uh, got, got an MRI scan, a specific MRI scan that I spoke about in my last video. And then that revealed that the problem was far more, like this is kind of a blessing, or like it's a good thing, um, but revealed it was far more extensive than I originally thought. So it wasn't just my legs. Like I say this jokingly, but I was, I've, I've always said like, if my leg gets bad enough, I'll just chop it off. Like I'm not gonna have like some grotesque tree trunk as a leg. Like I will literally, uh, I will not be, I will not like abide to sunken cost fallacy. I will just chop my leg off. Like and I'd always accepted that. I'd be like, yeah, that will happen um, if if it gets bad enough. And anyway, it turns out that the problem wasn't just in my leg, it extended right up um, into the lymphatics by my kidneys or like next to my kidneys. And uh, something else that happened to me as well, like rewind a few years, was um, I had this condition, an incredibly rare condition that no one knows about either, called Shyloria. And that's basically where you, if you eat fat, it is absorbed into your lymphatic system. That's like what happens to everyone. Um, and I had this condition where I basically had a hole in my lymphatics or my lymphatic system and I was leaking fat into my kidneys, like actual like globular, like white fat, like you get into a drain. And I found this out when I went for a pee one day and like I literally couldn't pee. Like I thought I had a kidney stone and then like I eventually managed to like force this pee out as bad as it sounds and all this like white, disgusting like, it didn't smell or anything, so it kind of makes it better. But it literally looked like rice pudding um, it came out of my came out of my dick, like into the toilet. And I was like, "Well, I'm dead." Um, I've got yeah. So I went to hospital and then had an ultrasound. Like they thought I might have a tumor in my kidney, um, but thankfully I didn't. And uh, it was a, it was basically a hole in my lymphatics um, that was whenever which would mean whenever I eat would eat fat because there's a hole between my kidney and the lymphatics I would leak fat into my kidneys into my bladder and uh, and yeah they were like we have no idea what to do I think they they said in in the hospital that I went to they said like we've got a combined 120 years of experience between all the consultants here and none of us have ever seen a con a, a case like this and they were like um, we don't know if you need surgery we don't know if you they, they literally just said to me because during the um, lockdown times as well they're just like just uh just yeah good luck pretty much um and it was all incredibly slow so i kind of took that into my own hands and i stopped eating again i made a youtube video on this i stopped eating fat i think it's about six months i went on a zero fat diet no fat whatsoever um which is obviously you will die on eventually you cannot live without no fat my hair was falling out i started to get eczema all over my body um, because my logic was that if i stopped eating fat it would like stop, uh, It would it, because it's passing through this hole or wound, the way that I saw it, it's pretty really simplistic, it's fistula, it would eventually it'd allow it to heal. So I just stopped eating fat until it would go away. And I was like, okay, I don't know how long this is gonna be, I don't know how long they're gonna do this, but I'm just literally not eating fat. So I did that, and then after about six months, um, one day I went to the toilet and I was no longer pissing out white stuff. It seemed to miraculously heal itself without surgery. But the, the reason I'm saying this is because fast forward again to when I saw the surgeon um, in Paris, um, I've got the MRI scan and then she's been like, oh yeah, like this is probably why you had this condition to begin with because all of your, all your lymphatics up here are all like fucked up as well. Um, she didn't actually say that. She's very French and, and proper. Um, and yeah, and then she was like, okay, so what they want to do is she, she wants to do an operation basically, as far as I understand, where she creates like multiple bypasses. So like a, like a bypass surgery that you have in your heart. She wants to like bypass the lymphatics that are blocked in that region. And then the idea is, is that that should allow the lymphatic fluid to drain properly from my entire 
that entire side. Um, now, like, and, and that she does a couple of other things as well. Um, I'm like, that's gonna be the first surgery. So hopefully it'll work and hopefully I won't need anything else. But I'm kind of worried that the condition that caused the chyloria, which is the thing I just spoke about at the start, like the way I think that happened was I think it happened by me wearing, basically effectively crushing my legs, as a long story, um, effectively crushing my legs and then the pressure from me crushing my legs basically do you know where you get like a fat woman and she like sits and I got one of those fetish, nah, joking. Um, basically the pressure from crushing my legs um, caused like a vessel to rupture, a vessel to burst. Like my concern is that that damage all up there is like my own self-inflicted thing that I did when my legs were crushed um, and that she'll, she'll, when she fixes that, that might solve that issue, but the underlying issue that solved the lymphedema is still gonna be there. Because the chylori I had about three years ago when I had the leg crushing was about three years ago. Um, but I've had the lymphedema since it's about 10 years old. So like, I'm kind of worried that the first surgery might might fix the lymphatics up in that region, but because, like, maybe I'm oversimplifying it, but because the, um, the issue extends all the way down into my leg and I've had that since I was 10, like maybe there's something else going on as well which is gonna require multiple surgeries. So that's why I was kind of like in a rock and a hard place with it. Because if I have this one surgery and then it does nothing and I've like busted my balls, paying for it and all the aftercare and everything and then she's like, yeah, you need, uh, you're gonna need a couple more surgeries. I'm literally screwed. Or if it goes wrong, I need like re 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 restor restorative reparation, you know what I'm saying, surgeries that basically fix the problem. Then I'm also screwed. So um, my good friend Tom, he texted me and he was like, mate, get over your ego, don't be an idiot. I'm making you a GoFundMe. You're putting it in a YouTube description. You're making a video about it. Do it, has made me a GoFundMe. And yeah, that's where we're currently at right now. Hey people, I just wanna jump on here really quick and say that the, the video that you're currently watching right now, I recorded that literally immediately after the other video went live and I started to get comments on it. So it's about 24 hours afterwards. It's now two or three days after I've recorded that video because the memory card was corrupted. Um, I've spent like the last three days trying to get the footage back. I've tried to re-record it, but I felt like it wasn't authentic. I've spent hundreds of dollars and I've finally managed to get the original footage back um, that you're watching right now. And I just want to say like, I haven't shared the GoFundMe yet, but the, the like properly other than in the YouTube comment, and uh, on my Instagram story once, I haven't really pushed it at all, but the response has been absolutely nuts. Like the donations from so many different people have been absolutely incredible. Please don't donate a lot. Please don't feel like you're obliged to donate, like I said, but I wanna say from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Like I literally never respected, never respected, never expected so many people to give a shit. Um, and it's mad that like, I've had such a, or some of my content has had such an impact on the lives of people that feel like it's no problem to donate to a stranger on the internet because I've given you value at some point or the other through my stupid videos or podcasts or whatever it is. So a massive thank you, man. And thank you to Tom as well, who made me set it up because it would have been a real struggle for me. I want to say that, like really re reiterate that anything over the target or anything that's not spent, even if I, let's say I only get one surgery and it works out at 10K, um, anything that is not used will be the, the direct on medical expenses, obviously, will be 100% donated to a charity, um, probably something relating to lymphedema, people in impoverished parts of the world like Africa that can't afford Africa, can't afford medical treatment. I just feel like one of those um, like entitled white people in Africa, I'm a gap year. But you know what I mean? Because out there it is a problem as well. And uh, obviously there's a lot of poverty and uh, healthcare isn't as good um, in certain places. So it'd be really, really good to help out people that aren't as fortunate as I am to have like such a crazy social media following and uh and yeah I just want to say like a massive thank you and also this has kind of made me realize that the podcast I did was so impactful on so many people so seeing as I'm going to be recovering from surgery as a bit of a thank you as well I'm gonna bring it back uh for 10 episodes I literally get asked about it every single day in the DMs it's mental like it blows my mind it's definitely the most impactful thing I've ever done and then the amount of people that have Message me about the podcast and how, like, being like, I, it's the least I could do. I, you, you've helped me so much through, especially during lockdown. The other things, I don't want to get like a, all fucking full of myself. But the it just kind of maybe kind of kind of made me realize that that was that had like such a positive impact on people. So what I'm going to do is bring it back for ten episodes guaranteed. Uh, the podcast, if it does really well, I'll keep doing it. If you guys like it. Oh, I might keep doing it. I might keep like pushing it if it gets the views, if it's getting the shares, if people are enjoying it, if it's giving people value. Um, but I will guarantee you 10 episodes and then we'll go from there. So yeah, lots of love. Thank you for watching the video. As you can tell, I'm probably 
a bit uncomfortable with the uh, and overwhelmed by everything that's happened. Um, it's absolutely insane. And I just want to reiterate as well that I'm literally fine. Like, I'm good at dealing sh with shit like this. This is probably like the most like emotional I've felt out of this whole thing because like I don't know how to respond to people yeah to this but yeah I'm, I'm all good it will be fine um I'll take you guys along for the journey um let me know if you want to see some graphic surgery videos as well because like I'll see if they can get um see if my girlfriend can go into the operating theater as well can I put that on YouTube I don't know um as well <laughs> do that um so yeah yeah anyway peace out people love to do this thank you good night